Ladies and gentlemen, you know the smile. You know the salsa. I got my dog to my left. I got Victor Cruz. Are we live? This is ha it's all happening right now. Right into oh, it. we right into it. We're okay. Right, right I'm into ready. It. I'm ready. Vic, what up, my guy? Vic. Yeah. Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. You played in one of them things. I did. You saucered in one of them I things. I did. I did. What type of routine okay. did you have the night before the Super Bowl? Could you sleep? Was it the same as a regular season game? Was it the same as an NFC Championship? Talk, it dog, was. Talk. It was different, dog. Like, the Super Bowl was different. Um, Even the NFC Championship game was different. It's the same kind of attention to detail, but it's still in your, in your, uh, in your weekly regimen, right? Yeah. You still, same preparation. You understand the game means a little bit more, but it's the same preparation. Right. Super Bowl, you get two weeks. You got the family. You got the friends chiming in on you. They want to come out. They want to support. You got to figure out how to do all of that early. Get it out the way. Let moms do it yeah. so that you can lock in and focus. Right. And then fast forward to the night before the game or the Super Bowl, I couldn't sleep, bro. I got the TV on. I got the jitters. I'm trying to rest. I'm thinking about all the greats that are going to be there the next yeah. day. Yeah. I'm thinking about I need. I can't let them down. Right. LT looking at me in pregame like with the nod yeah. like... <laughs> It's up now, like this is us, like, and yeah. I'm like, I got you, yeah, like, yeah. and you just understand that this is bigger than any game you've ever played in. This right. is bigger than any moment. You grow up as a kid playing on that one-way street, and you're in the Super Bowl when you're right. a kid, and you right. make the big pass and you win it, and right. like, you know what I'm saying? So like, to do that and it actually come to life, bro, was just a different sentiment, it's a different emotion. The UMass Victor Cruz, mm -hmm. did he ever believe? I know we have the dream. Of course. But did you ever really be like, I was going to play in the Super Bowl the way and be a factor no way. the way that I did it? Not even close. I mean, I, you always know that, like, you're going to have a chance, right? Yeah. You're, like, you're, you're a realist about who you are. You're like, look, I'm a UMass kid, Division One AA. I'm going to have to work my tail off. But I'm going to have an opportunity to right. some degree, no matter what that looks like, to have a chance. Now, as the opportunity started to get bigger and the, and the moment started to get bigger, I'm like, oh, this is, this is happening. Right. Like, this is, as the weeks went on and I'm, you know, scoring touchdowns and being an advocate for my team. And you know how it is. You're in the meeting room, like, oh, they dialing these up for me. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, exactly oh, this about. is, this is yeah. this going down this yeah. week. Like, so, and it's week after week of that. And I'm like, okay, this is, this is my moment. I have to just make sure I'm ready when my number is called each and every time. Right. And I got a Hall of Famer throwing me this football that I can't let him down. Screw the coaches. All of that's cool, Eli, but I'm in the trenches with him, yeah. and I got to make sure that I'm ready each and every time he throws the ball in my direction, that I can A, catch the ball, and do the best of my, best, uh, do the best of my ability to do the best I can once I catch the ball for him. Now, do you think... Brock Purdy mm -hmm. holds that same exact sentiment. He better. Yeah. Uh, he better because he has the opportunity to, like, slay the dragon, so to right, speak, right? right to right. to be the Eli to, to Tom Brady type the King of Arthur. Thing. Exactly, exactly. You know, so we'll see if he can do it, but the, but the mindset has to be there. And I think if there's ever a team that he's been a part of that has the tools to do it, yeah. I mean, it's the 49ers. They got yeah, weapons yeah. all over they the place. Weapons. They got the type of offense that can do anything, that he's obviously shown that he's very comfortable in. And uh, he can do things with his legs, obviously, when the plays break down, that he can do things with his legs. So he has all the tools to do it. Now, to, to actually go out there and do it is the hard part, but we're going to see if he can. Who do you, who's your prediction? Who you got? Now, with that being said, yeah. I'm going with Patrick Mahomes <laughs> and the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> Mainly because it's like, I'm a legacy guy, right? Yeah, 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 and yeah. I understand, like, we watched Patrick Mahomes go through some rough patches and come out the other end. Yeah. I think the biggest thing about his game is not all the touchdowns and the great passes and the third down and all that. He knows when to take a sack. Yeah. He knows when to throw it away and fight for another day. He's not caring about the statistics and all that. He wants to win the football game, yeah. and he wants to do that by any means necessary. So I think he understands just how to control the game as it goes along. He's not going to turn the ball over. Yeah. He's going to make the right decisions. And then nowadays, more than even when we were playing, they have four down territory. As soon as they cross that 50 or they get close to it, they got four downs. Right. So, like, you know, Coach Coffin wasn't going for it on fourth down like that. Yeah, no, nah, like, nah. The kick data it. wasn't, they yeah, didn't the, care about the data. The they data wasn't the there yet. So, sure. so they're doing that now more than ever, which gives you more opportunities for one of the best quarterbacks to play to have another crack at it. Like, it, it, that's tough to beat. Yeah. All right, so what you guys don't know behind the scenes, 
I officially met Victor Cruz in Paris during <laughs> Fashion Week. So yeah. we're going to turn over talk to Fashion. Talk that swag talk. Let's talk swag talk. I do something called Fairway Fits on the golf course. Yep. We are not on the golf course right now, even though we will be on Saturday. Correct. Don't worry about that. We'll talk about that later. Talk to me about swag in the NFL and who's like your top three guys right now in dressing. Oh, that's interesting. I think I think a lot of the guys, as you've seen over the years, they leveled up now. Yeah, like yeah, guys yeah. are really paying attention. I mean, I go to Giants games now. There's a blue carpet yeah. and like a whole like background and on it. I'm like, what is this? Yeah. Like we didn't have any of this. <laughs> Um, but I think I like guys that like to take risks a lot. I like Stefan Diggs. Yeah. He does a really good job of just showing his fit off and being cool and smooth. Shout out to DeAndre Ola. Hopkins, he likes to take a lot of risks and he's kind of a smooth cat coming into the stadiums. And then um and then last but not least, I'm gonna go with what's my guy? He just won that the guy my the, for the uh, for the uh, for the Browns. For the Browns. My I don't African have his buddy. name, yeah. I don't Jer have his name. Jeremy, Sorry. Jeremiah. Probably. Pro Bowl, I mean, it's the authenticity, man. Yeah. Like, you know it's real. He ain't faking it. He not doing it because it's different in his foot. He's actually from there. It's actually a part of his lifestyle. And he was showing it, had it on display week in and week out. Somebody's walking by in a hot dog outfit. That, that, that's <laughs> no, not that's the fashion that's we not talk. The, no, that's not, not, not the fashion about we that. talk about right talking, there. We ain't doing but no those glizzy three guys, fit. <laughs> the glizzy we fit. ain't doing the glizzy fit. But those three guys are are a uh, really high level for me. That's what's up. Okay, so let's talk about um, your partnership. Yep. With Captain Morgan. Talk about that. Yeah, so I've been working with Captain Morgan for about three years now, man. It's just been a phenomenal partner. And they've been doing this thing called the Fan of the Year Award where they go around the country and visit all these different uh, nominees for the Fan of the Year. When I tell you these people are fans of this game, like, you know, we grew up loving the game and we had our favorite players, but these people are on a whole nother level. Yeah. Like, they have a man, not a man cave, they have a man cave house. Like, yeah. their whole house is dedicated to their favorite sports teams, and I got to meet a lot of these people. And uh, and the, the winner will be chosen tonight at NFL Honors, mm -hmm. and they're going to get this trophy that you see behind us right now. That's the trophy that they're going to get and receive. And then on Saturday night at the Sports Illustrated party, oh, we in there. Uh, you know, with Kygo and the Chainsmokers yeah. and B.B. Rex are pulling up, yeah. and, uh, and we're going to have a good time, and they're going to be able to pull up. All the nominees are invited. They're going to pull up. And they're going to have a drink with Captain Morgan. They're going to drink responsibly, of course. And we're just going to kick back and have a good time. You're invited, too. You know I'm going to be there. You can pull up if I'm you want to there. as well. You know. you know what I'm saying? Say less. Say less. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Victor Cruz, let me get a quick one real quick. Oh, oh, we dancing. Oh, we dancing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he ain't, he ain't got a spec out right, but we dancing. We good. <laughs> Thanks, dog.